So I've been playing Risk of Rain 2 off and on since it came out, and it ended up hitting me with an extreme mixture of emotion and nostalgia regarding its progression. You see, in its current state it only has six characters, and you start with just one, the Commando. The way you unlock more characters isn't by constantly playing and building up some in-game currency to purchase them. A chunk of them are unlocked by doing a certain task. For example, the Huntress is unlocked by surviving the first three areas without dying. Now, depending on how good you are at games can determine how easy or hard that is to do, but it's entirely possible and it feels really rewarding. Another character, the Mercenary, has some more RNG to it, but once you get the portal to pop up after surviving one loop, you have to parkour to a certain area, touch a rune, and then kill yourself, which is pretty easy to do. So as I embraced the feeling of nostalgia that only 90s kids can remember, I got to thinking. A lot of games these days don't have the same rewarding feeling for unlocks. Now, I'm not saying they're completely absent from the current landscape of games, from AAA to indie, but compared to a few generations ago, it's certainly dwindled. One AAA title to focus on is Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Now, before it came out, it was stated from Sakurai himself that there were multiple ways to unlock characters, catering to those who enjoyed how progression was before Smash 4, which, by the way, only had 8 characters to unlock out of the vanilla roster of 49. So I was pretty fucking stoked. One of my favorite series of all time was returning to its roots, and I was in for a fun time unlocking the massive roster. Cut to the release of Smash Ultimate, and it's revealed that the main three ways of getting new characters was through Spirits Mode, Classic Mode Runs, or actual gameplay time. Honestly, I was real disappointed. I didn't feel like I earned any of the fighters. Yeah, I put time into unlocking them, but I missed the hell out of how it was in Melee. For example, to unlock Luigi, all you had to do was complete the first part of the Mushroom Kingdom level with a 2 in a second slot. It was golden. It kind of sucks some fun out of the games in my opinion. The recent gaming fads don't really help it much either. Looter shooters, pseudo MMOs, battle royales. I still enjoy games in those genres, don't get me wrong. I've sunk a major amount of time into The Division 2 since it came out, and I've been enjoying it quite a bit, man. But I can't say I enjoy my character, though. Any of his armor, weapons, cosmetics, I, I don't really feel they were earned, because you just happen to run around and pick up so much shit it just doesn't feel special. But on the flip side, years ago when a certain game by the name of Halo 3 came out and decided to take over my whole life throughout high school, it is still a bright and shining spotlight for the perfect amount of unlocks and challenges to keep me coming back. However, the last thing I want to do is come across is as another entitled gamer or someone just beating the same topic of today's landscape to death. There's going to be shitty games here and there alongside scummy business practices such as the way of life. Games are an evolving thing as time goes by. The things that got me into gaming are still here today. You wouldn't be wrong in saying I'm just some nostalgia boner popping 90s baby trash fuck. There's stuff out there for everyone and I don't really want to be that guy. And those are some of the main reasons I pretty much stick to any titles and roguelites nowadays. They have an abundance of things to unlock with different ways of doing so. Binding of Isaac, Enter the Gungeon, Dead Cells, Risk of Rain 2, Heart and Slash. They're just giving me something I've been craving since my childhood. Hard work being rewarded, a connection to the game, and an ultimate source of dopamine. Thanks for listening, everyone. <laughs>